Hi, so in the last video, we have talked about how to look up the charge and the barrel number for each quarks on the data table. And so this time, let's try to work on some exercise together. We'll be going through example 14, 15, 16, and also 17. So please try it yourself. Pause the video now. A few moments later. So for the first example, you have given a certain particle called hyperon. It doesn't really matter the name. So don't worry in IP physics that you are not expected to memorize any of these particles. They should always give you the quark content in the IP exam. So again, you don't have to memorize anything. You just have to know how to apply the data table. So this is down, down, strange. And it asks you whether or not this is uh, a baryon or a meson. So obviously, uh, how to determine this is all depending on the baryon number of this hyperon. So go and check it out. For D, uh, it will have a baryon number of, uh, well, actually, all these are regular quarks. So if you remem remember, or if you just check the data table, all of these, all six of these, will just give you a positive one over three barrel number and so that will give you a total of positive one so that's why the answer would be the baryon the regular baryon for meson the barrel number has to be equal to zero and obviously by looking at its structure you can already tell because it should be something that has a regular quark together with an anti quark next example it asks you to find the quark content of the antiparticle of this meson. Um, let's talk about January, how to find an antiparticle of a certain particle. So let's say if you go back and revisit uh, the quark content of proton, that will be U, U, D. Okay, so U, U, D is a proton. And if you want to find the antimatter of proton, then it's going to be simply getting each of these quantum to be its anti-quark. So anti-U, anti-U, and anti-D. And that is the simple trick how you can make a particle by like finding its antiparticle's quark content of a certain particle. However, since you are not told the quark content of these pi positive, which is called pi on officially, then there isn't a way that you can work it out. So this is the textbook's vote, all right? This is from textbook, so this is the vote from the textbook. Uh, they should give you the quark content. So in this case, let's just go and Google it. So this is called pi on, P-I-O-N. And uh, if you go into it and you will find on Wikipedia that it's going to be U-N-T-D, so let's put it down. This is going to be U anti D. And so for its anti pion, all right, let's just write it this way. Then the content is simply we kind of reverse the quark. So this will become anti up, and this will become the regular down quark. Next up, it asks you to find the barrel number, strangeness, which is something that we haven't mentioned, but I think if you are smart enough, you'll be able to find it from the data table and just apply it simply. And uh, the charge number as well for this hedron. So um, obviously, for the barrel number, allow me to write in this notation, but don't write in exam. Uh, these are all anti quarks. So if you like to, or if you don't remember, you can go back and check out. Uh, these are regular quarks, and they carry positive one over three barrel number. And so for these, these each of these will carry negative one over three because these are anti quark. And so you're like having all these three act together, and so this will give negative one. So obviously, this is a this is an anti barrier. As for charge number, let's do it first which is something that you should know. Um, go back and check out the data table and you can see the regular strange quark is going to be negative one over three. And so for this one, it's going to be positive 
1 over 3. And then you just add them together, or you can just multiply by 3, but I like to write this way, which is clear to see. So charge number is positive 1. Lastly, strangeness. So um, something that you need to read from the data booklet simply, and you don't have to memorize it. So according to the sentence here, all quads will have strangeness number of zero, that means you just ignore it. So for all these six quads, you only have to care about strange quark for its strangeness, obviously. So nothing that is complicated. So for a regular strange quark, it will have a strangeness number of negative one. Okay, so this is what it said. This is the game rule. Um, sorry, please don't ask me why it's not positive one because I don't know. All right, if anyone know, let me know in the comment section below. Like why it is not defined as positive one, but not but negative one here instead. Anyway, so since for a regular strange quark, it's going to be negative one, but then we've got anti strange quark, right? So it's going to be an opposite, the reverse of negative one. So that means for strangeness, uh, we will have positive one, positive one, and positive one. That means three positive in total. For strangeness, we'll talk more about it in the next video later on. They don't always conserve, and that's why it is very strange. 17 is a very typical question that you may see in the IB physics exam. They provide you a reaction and ask you to check whether or not it is possible. And the way that you check is simply by checking the conservation law. So uh, the conservation law that you need to check will include burial number, charge number, or which are the two that you have learned obviously, how to read from the data table. And there's one more, guess what? Not the strangeness, okay? Like what I said earlier, they don't always conserve and there is some other trick, some other rule that you have to look um, to check it out. The other conservation law that you have to check is called laptop number, okay? And that is something you can find from the data booklet also. But then in this question, I think we will only need to focus on the first two. Okay, so let's just focus on the first two for this question first. Okay, so for easier representation, I'll split this space into two and I will do part A here. And let's do barrier number first. Okay, so for left hand side, the barrier number is going to be proton and antiproton. So as you know, proton and antiproton, they should each have one and negative one, or even if you don't know any symbol or like any of them, it's, all, it's going to be canceled out anyway, right? And so that must be zero at the end. So for me, I'll put down one plus negative one. That will cost you zero. On right hand side, let's check. So again, these are pion. And if you recall uh, how we check out on Wikipedia, then you may recall that they are meson. If you look at uh, their structure, you know they are made of a quark and anti quark. And so obviously, uh, no matter it is positive, neutral, or negative, because they could be at a different form, as you can see here, right? But then no matter what they are, they are just a meson at the end of the day. So for barrel number, it's going to be zero plus zero. And lastly, this one is N, N referred to neutron. So it's going to be positive one. So at the end, you have one. So that means uh, left hand side does not equal to right hand side. And therefore, um, the barrel number or baryon conservation law is violated. Similarly, we can check the charge number. And so for left hand side, we have again proton and antiproton. So again, uh, you know proton will be positive one and antiproton is going to be opposite, so negative one. So again, it will be zero. For right hand side, we can see uh, this is neutral, neutral, neutral. So yeah, obviously zero. So Okay, this part is fine for charge number. All right, part B. Let's do again burial number first. 
and so we will have left hand side having a symbol of k0 so in case you don't know what it is and again it is default by the question that they should have provided you the quark content and so uh, what we can do is I can tell you that this is called Kion and you can find the quark content on Wikipedia also is again you can see it's a kind of Mason U N T S and so obviously for barrel number it's going to be zero because this is a Mason and then for right hand side uh, again these are pion so pion will be zero zero and then you can see here is an electron and if you recall what we have talked about earlier that electron is a kind of lepton it doesn't even belong to hedron or contain any quarks and so for barrier number obviously it is also zero okay and so that would equal to left hand side so for barrier number the test is passed now let's go for the charge number for left hand side it's going to be neutral as you can see it's k0 so 0 actually means neutral here and right hand side we have got positive 1 and then negative 1 for these two pi on and then for electron is of course negative 1 also so eventually you have negative 1 which does not equal to left hand side and again you can say the uh, conservation of charge is violated and last but not least all right actually i think this is good enough if you have finished all these things uh we have lepton number and that's something we again haven't mentioned and we'll we'll probably talk about this in uh, another video uh, two videos later on but then for b it actually has violated the lepton number because uh, that's something to do with the lepton the only lepton you can find which is the electron here on the left hand side you don't see any lepton all right and on the right hand side this is the only one lepton so obviously this is also violated so uh, if you have find that then yeah you should be happy and that's something uh, extra yeah find out